Okay, we're live. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Just check. Yeah. Store chat. Refresh. Just bear with me, everyone. There we go. Oh, the audio's nice, nice and crisp. Tank's looking good. Yay. Oh. Okay, here we go. Thanks for joining everyone, really appreciate it. Hope everyone is well and healthy in the crazy world that we're living in right now. And I think this is the third Sunday that I've done this live stream. Uh, just a, a community chat, an opportunity to engage with you guys. You can chat amongst yourselves in the chat as well if you want to. Uh, thanks to my moderating team, uh, you know who you are. I uh, really appreciate all your work and yeah, let's have a, a really good live stream, good session, uh, a bit of fun. Um, and let's start off by being grateful for aquascaping because I think a lot of people are at home a lot more than they normally are. And I think there's a lot more. In fact, I've set up, uh, if you see my last video, my latest upload, that was a quick update on the five tanks that I've got going on now. And I think this has been... This has been maintained, I think, three times this week already. Um, and on, let's talk about this for a minute because it's approaching kind of what I'd say full maturity now. And I want to take uh, a really great photo of it and potentially enter it into some contests, but also as an opportunity to share with you guys how I take photos. So potential for two separate videos or, or maybe one video. Um, I want to definitely do a video on how to get the best out of your smartphone for aquarium photography. Um, most people have smartphones. I think about two third of, you, two -third of um, YouTube content is watched on, on mobile devices now. And so it, it kind of makes sense, um, you know, to maybe encourage you guys to use your smartphones to take decent photos of your aquariums. Um, most modern smartphones have very advanced cameras and you know they're even sort of more advanced than the cameras now is actually the processors so you, the lenses might not be so great the optics etc but it's actually the, com the computational power uh, in the computer that can really um, get you really great results out of your phone so I'll do a video all about how to use your smartphone whether it's an iPhone or an Android device or whatever the principles remain the same for you know all the smartphones and you can get some great results. If you look at my Instagram account, the vast majority of those photos are taken with, uh, with an iPhone. Um, this is being live streamed right now on an iPhone as well. Uh, so it just shows you can get, you know, really good results. Um, and on that topic as well, you know, if, if you are a keen hobbyist and you have an Instagram account, then if you don't already do so, then maybe this is a great opportunity to uh, really kind of, focus a bit more on your Instagram account, you know, share your hobby with the world. It gives you a bit more of a, maybe a sense of purpose, uh, a bit more motivation maybe to make your tanks look even better than they already do, hone your photography skills, and you know, you can grow a, a community yourselves, uh, engage with other hobbyists. And I think this is a really great way, especially while we're in this environment that we are, you know, physically removed, or removed from each other. We're actually ironically more connected than we ever have been, you know, with the, with the beauty and technology uh, and social media. So that's to our advantage. So a bit of a ramble there about um, Instagram, etc. but you can look forward to uh, a video on how best to use your smartphone to take a good photo of your tank. Um, I'll just go over a little bit about news from my week since, since we last did a stream. Um, You've seen all the tanks that I've set up recently. Really excited to bring you some new content from my Awazo Style Line 85. If you did see the video, you will know you might have just got a, a sneak kind of glimpse that it's an Iwagumi setup. I did produce uh, quite a high end kind of video for Awazo. And once that's been published by those guys, I can do my own uh, video uh, for this channel as well. So you can look forward to that in a couple of weeks or so. And then after that, I've got an Oase Style Line 125, which is slightly bigger than the 85. 
and I'm not sure what aquascape, I'm probably going to do very kind of wood heavy because this Iwagumi is obviously just rocks and I wanted to do something more wood based, maybe some crypts, some stem plants and quite a kind of jungle kind of scape, maybe non-CO2 as well, quite low tech friendly. And then I actually had this idea the other day of um, creating a series of aquascapes, all kind of biotope themed. So if you don't know what a biotope is, it's uh, trying to replicate a natural habitat of, of where the fish actually come from. So it could be, you know, the Amazon or a tributary from the Amazon. Uh, it could be um, a blackwater, you know, kind of uh, estuary or fast flowing stream in, from Asia. Or I did one of my first biotopes I ever did was uh, Cambodia, which had harlequin resboras in there, uh, blackwater set up with leaf litter, etc. And I think this is a really good opportunity to combine uh, some educational kind of perspective from, you know, choosing the right fish, the right plants, the right, you know, appropriate water chemistry, appropriate temperature, appropriate flow rates, feeding the fish the appropriate foods, getting all of these things right to promote the best kind of natural behaviour of the fish, because that fish is used to living in that natural habitat. So I did consider creating a series of biotopes, uh, maybe one a month or so. And I think this would be really nice video content for you guys as well. Uh, trying to combine the beautiful aesthetics of aquascaping, uh, but with the welfare and you know attention being paid to giving that fish the best environment possible for it to thrive. Uh, I do have hard, relatively hard tap water here, so. I'm not intending on using reverse osmosis, so I might be a little bit limited in, in, the, in terms of what fish I can stock. But good news is that most captive bred fish these days, even if, even if they originally come from like a really soft, acidic water it, from their origins, from their natural habitat, a lot of them that have been captive bred are, are adapted to harder water. So I should have scope to do, you know, a, a vast sort of spectrum of, of biotypes. So that's something I'm really considering. Uh, drop me uh, some ideas in the comments and I'll look through, I'll review them and, and see if there's any great ideas that I hopefully I can replicate uh, and share with you guys. Uh, regular sort of readers to Practical Fishkeeping magazine going back sort of 10 years or so may remember a series that I did on biotypes um, and I did, I did some really lovely ones, well, most of them in a 60 centimetre aquarium. This is about, I think it's a 75 or 80 centimetres, so a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, I did a series, I think I did about 10, 10 different biotypes month after month. And that was really good. It kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone. Uh, I wasn't just doing like standard nature aquarium style like I normally do, um, but getting some really interesting fish and then doing some research on those fish using websites like fishbase.org, uh, which is a great website. You can, you can look at where the fish comes from, um, the water chemistry, the plants that are endemic to that, that habitat. Um, and really kind of get something quite accurate. And it's actually really nice, um, really great contests out there, biotope aquascaping contests. So um, it may be a, I could potentially enter some of those. I mean, some of the, the standard now of these biotope aquascapes is outstanding and um, yeah, really, really inspirational actually. It's, it's nice to do something a bit different rather than just aquascaping for the sake of making a, an aquarium look beautiful, but actually doing something of a little bit more kind of purpose and adds a little bit more value potentially by creating something beautiful to look at, but also a really, really great home for the fish and being really thoughtful about stocking the fish in the right quantities, the right species that actually go together, that would live together in nature. And I think there's something even kind of more on a, on a deeper level of connecting with nature and even like the environmental kind of sustainability impact and being educational, especially for children and things like this. And rather than an aquarium just being kind of uh, an ornamental piece, uh, you know, something that's beautiful and, and living in your living space, um, but more than something just pretty to look at, something that's actually, you know, designed to really uh, make those thrish thrive, you know, they'll put, you know, potentially be able to breed them and um, yeah. Just something to think about. Let me know is any biotope ideas that you've got in the comments. I do have a stash of uh, botanicals from Tannin Aquatics and also my good friends from Crowders Aquatics. I think James Sheen has sent me a load of botanicals over from Blackwater UK. So the, this, 
the potential to create black water setups is, is very is very good. Um, but maybe some some something different. Like I really I'm really interested in maybe like um, some Gobi setups. Uh, maybe something with you know really fast flowing shallow water. Maybe even something kind of semi emerged. So you know maybe only fill the tank half with water. Have loads of emergent plant growth. You know have like a super fast flowing. I don't know lo loads just so many things to consider. So exciting. So that that's a tentative plan the long-term plan for the style line 125. I think I'm going to keep the Malawi cichlid tank running just because I love it so much. The fish are just so beautiful, so active. I've, I've, I've kind of uh, evolved the hardscape over the last six months or so, just taken pieces out, rearranged it slightly so the fish have got a little bit more room and just aesthetically it's a little bit more balanced. Um, but I, I don't intend changing that anytime soon. Um, it's just nice to have a constant you know, and, and something that, that I'm really kind of focusing on the fish, uh, looking after them as best I can and getting the best colours and, and just seeing them behave really well. Um, the Starline 85, that's a new Agumi, which we'll do a, a release a video on that soon. And then we've got the Flu Valve Flex, which you've probably hopefully seen a tutorial video for already. And also do check out the Tropica Aquarium Plants uh, YouTube channel where I did a seven day update on that tank. And I've got to say, it never ceases to amaze me how well the Tropica 1-2 grow plants do. If you get them fresh, you put them in a, a decent substrate like the Tropica Aquarium soil or soil powder. Um, I just use a little bit of the premium nutrition, the Tropica premium nutrition liquid fertilizer, just doing one square today. I am doing big water changes every day or every other day, at least 50% for the first few weeks. But the growth, even with no seed to injection, is just, I'm just so impressed with it. Really, really healthy. No signs of any algae. I have added uh, uh, one nearite snail, one Amano shrimp and one cherry shrimp. Um, I will add more shrimp, probably add more cherry shrimp because I love them so much and they're breeding really well in here. So I'll just net a few out, maybe half a dozen, maybe 10 or so, put them in the flex. They'll probably start breeding in there. And then in the longer term, I can think about stocking some fish so again, open to ideas on what fish I should be stocking in the flu valve flex. For those that don't know, Nimrod's my male better fish, sadly passed away a couple of months ago. I was really, really quite sad. I didn't do a video on it deliberately because it was, I was quite sad about it. Um, but funny story, well, not really funny, but he, he passed away and then I didn't have the heart to re-escape the tank. And I just, I had it actually in the other, in the, in the living room, just behind this wall here. And um, I have to confess, I turned off the filter and the heater, I left the lights on the timer and I didn't touch it and didn't do any water changes and the plants just grew, they kept growing and growing and when I lifted the lid up, you may have seen the video of me doing this on my Instagram, I think I put it on a, did I put it on Instagram or did I put it on a, I can't remember, but I, there is something out there which I uploaded recently and all of the Hygrophila cymensis 53b had grown so much, it had grown out of the water um, adapted to its out of water state and actually started growing all the way around, around the LED lamp. So when I lifted the lid up, it kind of all, it was all kind of uh, all tangled up in, in, in each other. So um, yeah, that was interesting to see that, you know, plants will just grow even without, you know, sometimes without um, circulation. Uh, there's no heater, uh, just the lights on for eight hours or so. It was a good substrate. It was the uh, Tropica uh, soil but I wasn't adding any liquid fertilizers. But it just shows, you know, that you can achieve success with a super low tech system. You know, um, um, MD Fish Tanks, if he's watching, congrats on your 100K. You know, he, he does loads of these no tech tanks, um, no CO2, no filter, no heater, and you can achieve great success. I think the key with that is, is having healthy plants to start with and a high density of plants as well, because these act as the filter and they just help help create a kind of uh, healthy uh, biological balance in the aquarium even without filtration. Obviously stocking fish etc is going to be a bit more challenging and you always need to put the welfare in style. Um, but yeah that's that's all the tanks so far that are up and running. I do have an idea for a I'm really excited about this and this is an exclusive I've not told anyone about this project 
I'm looking now. All right. I was jabbering on for about 10, 15 minutes and there's just, can anyone hear me now? Sorry about that guys. 19 people watching. Okay, um, I really apologize for that. I, didn't, I should have been keeping an eye on the, on the stream on my computer. Um, uh, it's really, really annoying. Okay, where did we get up to? What, did, what was the last thing I talked about? Because I really went into some, um, some details about future plans with aquariums and... Yeah, I really apolo apologise for that, guys. Okay, so let me know if you heard me talk about the Tropica AquaCube and then I'll tell you the whole thing over again, which took me about 10 minutes to do. New project. Did I talk about biotopes? Did you hear me talking about biotopes, a series on biotopes? New project. We missed the cube. Did it? Let me know if, it, if I talked about biotypes or not. Oh, Tommy's here. Yes, biotypes. Repeat, Tropica, biotypes done. Okay, Tommy's here. Hello. Ooh, he's a good boy. So uh, we talked about biotypes, excited about that. Um, right, I'm gonna put this on my lap to make sure it doesn't freeze. Massive apologies for that. So, exciting project. I, so the background story is that when I went to Tropica regularly, I was um, involved with helping to create some display aquascapes for Interzoo 2020 for Tropica and for their 50th anniversary. Some of you may have seen the videos. There is a series of them on the Tropica YouTube channel, so check those out. As a group, I think there's five of us, all full-time aquascapers, and we all, uh, between us, we, we scaped 11 aquariums. And part of this process, Holger Windelov came to kind of hang out and watch us. And Holger is the founder of Tropica. Are we still live? Yes, we are. <laughs> Honestly, I was so frustrating when it went blank. Um, so Holger it, it founded Tropica in 1970. And being the 50th anniversary, he was really keen to kind of, you know, watch us guys do some aquascapes. And I had a really great conversation with him. Uh, long story short, he ended up giving me this amazing gift. I actually got a bit emotional when he gave it to me the Tropica Aqua Cube. It was released in 2004. Um, I think it was only available for about a year. And it's actually a eight inch or a 20 centimeter cube made of solid crystal. It's not like a regular aquarium with five panes of glass silicon together. It's actually made from one solid piece of Czechoslovakian uh, Republic crystal. So really, really nice bit of kit. Comes supplied with a, a little lamp. Uh, it's actually a halogen lamp and its own like little lamp stand. Beautiful bit of kit. Not available to buy anymore, unfortunately, but super grateful and super lucky to be given this by Holger. Um, so Tropico were kind enough to fly it over for me. I have it at home right now. And then my plan is to do, because everyone's on lockdown and I can't do any physical workshops in, in stores, I thought what better than actually do a workshop live for you. So the plan is to use like uh, professional kind of lighting, hopefully figure out how to get my, my better camera um, used for live streaming and basically try to create this, this workshop for you, uh, the best kind of live stream that I can, hopefully if technology allows it to. Um, so yeah, really excited about that. Not sure what escape I'm gonna do, but I'll take you through the whole process and it'll, it'll just be really good fun and you'll get to experience, you know, a, a workshop, um, obviously, you know, up from home because, you know, of the nature that we're living in right now, we can't actually meet up for real. So hopefully I'll get loads, hopefully be able to publicise it, get loads of people watching at once, let's share it all around the world and try to get a real kind of buzz all about this <laughs> aquascape in this tiny little beautiful tropical aqua cube. So, yeah, uh, probably two weeks time, but I'll give you guys plenty of notice. Um, I'll publish the links, etc. Hopefully you can share them around and, and let's try to get as many people uh, watching this, this uh, live aquascaping workshop as possible. So thanks so much uh, for the super chat. 
uh, Austin Danny. Thank you so much. Um, other news, and we talked about all my aquariums at home. Um, I've just been busy uh, finishing the book off. Hopefully by the end of this week, I'll be going soon from my editor. He's actually an aquarium keeper as well, which is really handy because he knows the kind of, um, you know, he, he's, he comes from, from a hobbyist background, so he, he can read it with some authority and he's actually given me some great ideas for more content. So, um, yeah, it's going to be great. The release date has been postponed till November. Um, you can pre-order it from Amazon, but I would encourage you maybe to wait and ho hopefully buy it from your uh, local retailer. I'd rather support the local uh, aquatic shops rather than Amazon, to be honest. Uh, obviously, I'd like to sell as many copies as possible, but I prefer to do that uh, through Amazon. Tommy, what have you got? Emma, can you call Tommy? Hi. He's got a sweet, sweetie wrapper. Yeah. Go see mummy. Yeah. Good boy. Um, so, what was I talking about? I got distracted by Tommy. Uh, the book, yes. So, um, it's about going to be about 40,000 words, maybe 50,000 by the time I finish. Loads of extra content uh, that I'm planning. Um, but the most exciting thing for me, well, it's obviously the whole thing is going to be great, but I've um, been looking through some, some old photos from my old photo libraries and there's stuff that's completely exclusive that's not been published in any magazines or the internet yet or anything like this. So really excited to, for these to be kind of part of the book. Um, all the techniques and the methodologies and the step-by-steps the step and stuff, it won't be much of a surprise to regular viewers to the channel. Go see mummy. Go see mummy. Daddy's busy. Good boy. <coughs> Um, but it would just be lovely to have a book, I think, you know, a published book, uh, maybe in the future, make it an audio book or um, an e-book. Um, but there's something I think really special about having a paper book where you can physically take it around with you and feel it and the high quality photos. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be um, a nine by nine inch book, so square format, uh, but hard, hard cover and high quality pages. Um, and I'm really excited by it. I've already decided what the center, the double page spread will be in the middle. I won't um, spoil the surprise. Um, but yeah, no, it's gonna, it's gonna be great. And I'd obviously really appreciate it if you guys uh, could consider uh, buying it. I do wanna kind of make it available. Um, I, am, I am kind of in the process of setting up my own website. So there might be potential to buy it from there, maybe buy signed copies or obviously giveaways, etc. Um, but yeah, the book, it's been a, obviously a long uh, ongoing project, um, but super excited by it. You know, I've been writing for magazines on and off for the last 10 years or so, um, more than that, 15 years or so. Um, and, but to finally have a book published by a, a full on, not, not self-published, you know, anyone can actually publish their own book if they want to, but to be approached by uh, a really big publisher, they're actually based in New York, Skyhorse. Um, yeah, it's exciting. I'm really excited by it, yeah. Uh, thanks for the super chats again. Uh, Fish Fanatic, how much is the book? Uh, hi MD, love the vids. Um, the book, I think it's gonna retail for about $20. So uh, I, think you can, I think you can save some if you pre-order it now, but like I said, Try to wait until it's available from your local aquatic retailer and then support those guys, especially now. You know, Amazon probably aren't struggling at all, but, you know, it's re we've got, really got to look after the local aquarium stores at the moment. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be struggling because they haven't got the footfall. Some of them are doing mail order. Some of them are doing a personal delivery service. But obviously, they're going to be ha having a huge impact uh, from what's going on at the moment around the world. So... I just, it just as a general note to you guys, you know, please do consider supporting your stores. You know, even if you can't, um, you can just buy stuff that you not, don't even need right now. If you can afford it, I know some of you will be struggling financially as well right now with what's going on. But if you can afford to, you know, just consider buying stuff that you might need in the future. You know, it's a great opportunity to rescape your tanks potentially or just buy some new plants and new hardscape. Um, you know, hardscape and soil and things like this 
are always useful. You know, they don't need to. You don't need to um, wait to buy them. You can buy them and then just keep them for when that eventually you do a new aquarium or a rescape, etc. So um, yeah, just just support your local stores. It's really important. S Whiskey's here. Hello, mate. How are you doing? And Lizzie, thank you. Fish Fanatics, all I can afford. I really appreciate it. Um, I've got another one. Mateus, another super chat. Thank you, Mateus. Appreciate it. Hi, George. How, how long can an in vitro Eleocaris mini survive in package without light? Should arrive a week after shipment. I'm doing a rescape. Instagram math understroke scapes. Okay, so uh, without light, Eleocaris, you're probably looking at a couple of weeks at least. If you can, just put it somewhere where it's gonna get a little bit of light. I mean, you could even actually have, float, have it floating in your aquarium. It's gonna get light from your tank if you've got an aquarium that's running. If not, maybe put it by a windowsill where it's getting some natural light. It, the, the plant will want to grow because it's a baby plant and it's in a super rich nutrient liquid. And so if you're starving it of light, you know, you're basically slowly killing it. So just try to give it some light if possible. Uh, but if not, it should last a good couple of weeks. If, if you can, Eleocaris isn't so great in the refrigerator. Mosses and stuff will do great in the fridge. Actually, um, Tropica actually supplies special coolers which keep the plants at 16 degrees Celsius, 15, 16 degrees Celsius, which is the best kind of temperature to keep them at. Uh, so if you do have an option to keep them at that, that sort of temperature range, then try to do that as well. Um, yeah, for those that do want to pre-order it off Amazon, if you just uh, search George Farmer Aquascaping, you'll see it on there. Uh, but like I said, if you can wait, um, then please do buy it from your aquarium retailers. My long, my, I kind of plan is to um, is to travel with it and do a bit of a book, a book promotion tour um, start off on the west coast of the USA and then work my way across east visiting some uh, some of the best kind of scaping stores maybe combining that with a workshop in each store and a book signing um, that would be great and I, I can I can obviously for folk that can't physically come to the stores um, I can vlog the whole thing obviously uh, for the channel as well so everyone gets the benefit from it so Really exciting. Um, I anticipate this will happen kind of next spring now. So probably, you know, probably in a year or so. Maybe, maybe if it comes out in November, yeah, and then you've got Christmas. So yeah, probably or early 2021, I would say that the tour would, would potentially happen. Uh, will the book be available in Germany? Uh, yes, uh, you can order it online. Um, when it comes out, I'll obviously promote it a lot more. This is just a tentative kind of tease, really. But just to let you know that it is definitely progressing and I'm just really excited by it. Um, it's, it's quite hard to, to, to explain when you're writing a book. Um, you, you put a lot, so much effort into the, into the actual writing and it seems to take forever and you don't really get a sense of achievement, really, until you start seeing the manuscript going back and forwards between me and the publishers uh, and then I'm starting to get all the photos together and deciding where to insert them in the, in the text appropriate in appropriate places and, and the, I, I, it's kind of just accelerating that process now of, of becoming a reality so yeah I'm rambling sorry <laughs> yeah shout out to S Whiskey's channel for those that don't uh, watch him already Jimmy Gimble uh, one of the moderators he, uh, Jimmy, if you want to put your link to your own channel on there, that's fine. I'm sure Lizzie can. Um, Jimmy is like um, it's a super nice guy and a super skilled photographer and filmmaker, although he's quite humble. Um, but if, if I've got any kind of technical questions about photography or cameras or, you know, Jimmy's actually edited a few of my videos now. He's edited the Yuri's interview, uh, which was actually shot with three cameras. Um, and I'm still using like a base model Mac MacBook Pro and iMovie, so there's no way I could handle that. Um, so yeah, Jimmy Conley edited that for me, and he's edited a, a couple. Uh, I think he edited the Balash interview I did as well. 
Um, so yeah, really nice guy, really great channel. Uh, check him out uh, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Oh, bless you, Mark. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, 199. If anyone is in the NHS, I'd like to buy one of you a copy. Oh, that's amazing, Mark. So generous. That's a really nice gesture. All right, is anyone uh, linked to link, link to uh, S Whiskey's channel yet? Someone put the link on for us. Okay, so that's bit of, that's pretty much the updates from me. Um, I did want to kind of talk a bit more about how important it is to have routines and things, especially if you're aquariums, you're at, you're at home more, you know, maybe get into a bit more of a strict routine with, with maintenance. The first thing I do in the morning, I'm, I'm normally the first one out of bed in the morning, I feed Tommy, I feed the fish, do the fertilisers, the tanks that haven't got auto doses, you do the dishwasher, do all the air good stuff. Um, but, you know, have a kind of strict routine when you're at home. Is I think it's really important if you're stuck at home every day. It's probably quite easy to, to lay in if you haven't got kids and animals to look after. Um, you know, keep fit if you can. Keep physically fit. You know, in the UK, you're allowed to go outside once a day to exercise. Um, I, I go in my garden. The weather's been beautiful here in the UK. You know, I nip in the garden and do some push-ups and squats every so often just to keep active. You know, I do find, you know I'm sat behind a desk a lot of the time. So it is important to get up and, and move about. Sitting's actually, you know, uh, really bad for you for any kind of length of time. So just, yeah, just look after yourself. Stay hydrated. Uh, just keep your immune system up if you can, you know, to fight off this horrible thing that's going on around, right now. Um, drink loads of water. Eat, you know, eat healthy fruit and veg. Um, try not to eat too many processed foods. You know, supplement if you, if you can, especially things like vitamin C, vitamin D3, uh, magnesium. Um, vitamin A as well, which is good for immunity. And just, yeah, just look after yourselves sort of physically and mentally as well. Try to get a good amount of sleep. Um, try not to get addicted to social media. That's quite hard. But yeah, just a few little tips for you. I'm, I am really into um, sort of health and fitness and wellness, but maybe it's time to set up a new channel for that. <laughs> oh, Elliot Long, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, does Seachem Prime safe affect liquid ferts if dosed on the same day? I, I want to say not enough to really notice any difference. So I I dose regardless every day, if, even if I've done, even if I've dosed de uh, dechlorinator or something. So, and it's the same with activated carbon in your filter. It it might have a slight impact, but not enough to worry about. I would definitely still keep keep up that regular liquid fertilizer dosing. got another one. Alan Cox, George, can't wait for your book and thanks for all your fantastic content. Love from Zwante. Alan, thank you so much. Cheers. Okay, we've got some, um, some questions. Yeah, sorry about the slurping noise. We just finished it now. Any guesses what, uh, no one can guess what drink that was. Uh, if you can guess what drink that was, I will give you $100. <laughs> okay, we've got some interesting kind of off-topic questions, which I'm happy to talk about. Um, let's just keep going for about 20 minutes or so. So let's just go into a Q&A now. I think I've covered, I've done an update of all, uh, all the tanks and all the projects and stuff that's going on. So let's go into, let's go into a Q&A. If you definitely want your question answered, then very likely I'll be able to answer it. If you do a super chat, it just highlights your question, so it's much easier to see. But other than that, just fire away and I'll answer as many as I can. Um, green tea, no. Oval tea, no. I'll let you know what it is because it, you no know, one will get it. It is a mixture of um, grass-fed butter, collagen protein, uh, creatine monohydrate, um, a cacao powder, organic cacao powder, and a chai latte tea bag and boiling water, all blended together. So I don't think anyone would have guessed that. <laughs> no, not bulletproof coffee, nearly ready. 
Yeah, no coffee. I don't drink coffee after 1 p.m. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was going to guess, yeah. Okay, someone, someone said, what was my um, job in the RAF? Um, I was actually an armourer, a weapons technician. Uh, so I did a few roles. Uh, one of them was uh, working in an explosive storage area, looking after all the explosives and, wep and weapons, etc. Uh, ammunition, bombs, stuff like that. And then I worked in a, an ejection seat bay. So the, you know, the ejection seats that pop out the jet fighters. Um, specifically, I was, look I was doing the Harrier, Harrier jump jets, ejection seats. Um, I was actually a supervisor level then. And then I worked in a, a, another kind of sort of second line, you know, looking after equipment uh, that f gets fitted to aircraft. Then I was actually an instructor um, for weapons, for tornado aircraft weapons. I uh, instructed uh, the younger guys, uh, the, the, you know, the junior ranks on how to prepare uh, the weapons for the aircraft. And then I, uh, my last tour of duty was actually in, in Afghanistan in Helmand Province on a bomb disposal tour attached to the army. Um, and that, 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 was, that was the kind of time that I decided that the RAF wasn't for me anymore. Uh, I got hit by a roadside IED, um, which was a bit of a wake-up call. Uh, grateful that I didn't uh, get seriously injured. Um, but it made me realise that, you know, this isn't uh, what I was put on this planet for. Um, I was already a really keen hobbyist and making a little, like a side hustle doing aquascaping. So long story short, I decided to make aquascaping my full-time career and, and I left the RAF. Um, and then I, soon after that, I met my current wife, Emma, and now I live with Emma, uh, her, her two boys, uh, Harrison and Toby, and my daughter from my, my previous marriage. Um, she's here right now and I see her frequently and she stays with us frequently as well. So um, yeah, basically um, made the transition from Air Force to full-time aquascaper. It wasn't without its challenges, you know, um, but I'm in a very uh, good space right now with uh, things like YouTube uh, are really are really good for me in terms of uh, finding um, my kind of career more purposeful and, and adding value. Um, still really like to, uh, you know, the creative side of aquascaping I absolutely love. I love to share it with everyone. That's my passion is to really um, share aquascaping and promote aquascaping as something that can really enrich people's lives, you know, and, that, and that's what I try to get across with my, with my um, content, you know, whether it's, you know, it's, it's, I try to make it a, a, a nice blend of inspirational and educational content, maybe not so entertaining as some of the other channels out there, um, but that's just not my style. That I probably it wouldn't be authentic for me just to be kind of super entertaining and funny all the time. Although I am really funny in real life, if anyone knows. Mark knows me and Radu knows how funny I am. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm rambling, but um, there we go. I think it's quite might be quite interesting for some of you. Mushroom coffee. That, I have tried that. That's very good. People are still guessing what, what uh, drink I've got. Current wife. Yeah. <laughs> This is a good question from Jason Larkham. What species of fish you've wanted to keep but never have? That's a really good one. Um, I've kept discus, but I'd, I'd like to keep them again. I'd really like to keep wild discus, um, but they're really quite tricky. Oh, altum angels, that's, de that's a definite one. I'd really like a huge aquarium, you know, sort of 10 foot by, you know, four foot deep. And really grow them on to their full potential. <clears throat> That'd be lovely. Yeah, Altum Angels. Maybe Altum Angels and Wild Discus mixed mix together. That'd be epic. Uh, James Dyer, have you experience with Jahiros LED lights? No, not really. Oh, Ginger Graves. Um, thank you, Gigi, for the super chat. George, can I dose my supplemental potassium on the same day as I dose my all in one fertilizer, or do I need to alternate days? Absolutely, you can dose it on the same day. Yeah, no problem. Um, you can get an all-in-one fertilizer that contains the potassium already, but if you want to add extra potassium, then absolutely you can do it on the same day, no problem. 
Thank you for the super chat, really appreciate it. Um, I enjoy the rambling. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, Mark Daw, a little bit funny. Uh, Trini Fish Hobbyist TV in capital letters. I guess you're shouting. <laughs> Will you ever do a detailed series on aquascape types and techniques? Um, not sure, actually. It's in the book, so maybe we need to buy the book for that. <laughs> James Renshin, Ren, sorry if I've destroyed your name. Uh, George, please bring your book tour to Seattle, Washington. Absolutely. Would love to visit the guys at Aquarium Co-op. And I know there's a couple of really good stores there as well that I'd like to see. And that makes sense to start off on the West Coast, uh, Seattle. I'd love to visit Seattle regardless. Um, Alawi Al Kadwari Aquasky RGB on a 60p, is that considered medium or highlight? I would say highlight. Um, if you're injecting CO2 and you've got good fertilizer, a good nutrient, um, a good substrate, uh, you could be able to grow any plant that you wanted with that light. So uh, that, that's my advice. I would definitely suggest injecting CO2 and adding a good liquid fertilizer regularly with that light because it is a strong light. Uh, this is a good question and it's, um, it's something that I've considered, where's it gone? Something about Wabi Kusa. I apologize if I've, I've, I've lost it, but I remember the question. Um, why don't I do many Wabi Kusas? Um, I should, I don't know. That's a really good question. It, I just, at the moment, I just prefer underwater stuff. I, I do love nature. I do love, you know, house plants and growing stuff out of water. Um, but it's something I'm, I'm definitely going to need to do more of, I think. Yeah, I don't really know how else to answer that. It's a really good question. It's something to think about. <clears throat> Daniel Whittle, when will our book will be released? Hopefully November. Uh, Nick... Will you do a book tour, UK book tour? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I would try to kind of stick to the UK aquascaping specialist stores, aquarium gardens, it happened to be two miles from my house. Scape Nature, Riverwood Aquatics, Horizon Aquatics, Crowders Aquatics, uh, Rockpool, um, yeah, Rockpool from Coventry if they're still running. And uh, what's the one in Dorset of oh, Dunk Duncan Jones and Amy? I forget the name. Fish Cove, Fish Cove Aquatics as well. Um, but if, if you're a UK store owner and you want to get in touch, then uh, just go on my Instagram, hit the email button, and then we can have a chat and maybe uh, organise a workshop for you guys. Michael Largent, your thoughts on Netflix Tiger King? don't know that. Um, I need to look at it. What, what's it about? Oh, James Dyer, at what PSI do I change my CO2 bottle? Great question, because I changed mine today and it was down to, oh, I, I couldn't even read it. it I keep an eye, once it starts to go down, it goes down really quickly and then I just do it as it's approaching zero. So I don't know the number, but it, 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 it's, as long as there's still a little bit there, just off zero, then I'll change it. Thanks for the super chat, James. Really appreciate it. We've got another super chat. Um, Mickey ne Nielsen. How do you determine the balance between CO2 light intensity and liquid ferts? That's a really great question. You start off with your light. So you this, is, this is an in-depth question. It's worth going into some detail because it's quite a good value, quite a good value in this answer, I would say, for everyone that's watching. Um, Choose the light according to what plants you want to grow. Uh, figure out the most demanding plant of all that selection and then choose your light according to that. Try not to go too much above that because it's just more risk of algae, more maintenance, you need more CO2, more fertilizers. So figure out your most demanding plant, choose your light according to that. And then it's quite simple. I would stick, try to get 30 parts per million CO2 consistent through the photo period. Use a drop checker or use um, KH, pH test kit uh, tables. 
Um, and then your fertilizer, I would go, um, I mean, I have lots of experience with the all-in-one fertilizers. They're quite, most of them are a very similar recipe. So I would start off with adding five millilitres per 100 litres of aquarium water, which is about 33, about 30 US gallons, no, about 27 US gallons, five millilitres of liquid fertiliser every day for every 27 US gallons or 100 litres, and then change at least 50% of the water a week. So the idea is you're not actually tailoring the liquid fertiliser to the light and the CO2. You're keeping the light and the CO2 constant and you're actually keeping those liquid fertilizers relatively constant, a little bit too much every day, and then you change a lot every week. This is the estimative index, basically. So it ensures the plants never go hungry and you change a lot of the water every week to ensure those nutrient levels don't go up too much. And that's the method I do. That's the method I promote. It's the method I talk about in the book. And you can tailor that to any aquarium. The more that, that five mil a day per 100 litres, that applies to a, a relatively high tech setup. So, you know, quite good, quite high lighting, CO2 injection, lots of plant growth. The lower energy system you have, so if you don't have CO2 injection, you have low levels of light, then just drop the fertiliser down accordingly. So if you've got really low light, no CO2, and you could get away with maybe one mil or two millilitres a day per 100 litres. And then just keep an eye on your plants. Keep an eye, especially on the fastest growing plants. They're the ones that are going to show nutrient deficiencies the quickest. If they start to look pale, like a pale green or a light or a yellow, or they start to get holes, etc., then you just need to up your fertilizer dosing. But if you've got good light, good CO2, adding, you, you can't add in loads of plants, it's actually quite hard to overdose. So always go for a little bit too much fertilizer than too little. That's my advice. Hopefully that answers the question for you. <clears throat> okay, last 10 minutes or so, guys. Uh, duckweed, yes or no? No, not for me personally, because it just gets out of control. But in a low-tech system where you can control the growth, etc., it does have its benefits. Uh, Martin, red fern. Hi, Martin. How you doing, mate? Um, hi, George. Are you still considering going to the dark side and doing a reef tank? Um, I will. Yeah, I am considering it. I, I, I was in talks with uh, Aquarium Connections with, with Vince Thomas, who, who um, basically runs the Triton system over here in the UK and he's actually built a tank for me and he was going to sponsor the channel with the whole system but obviously with the lockdown right now and I've got five freshwater aquariums running I actually physically don't have the room for a reef tank now but who knows in six months 12 months or so and and the offer's still there from Vince then it's definitely something I'll consider um, you know I'd, I'd love to learn new stuff I definitely have um, a thirst for knowledge with regards to anything and I'd love to learn more about keeping a reef tank and no better way to learn about it than actually do it and the Triton system is it would be useful for me because it, it's quite low maintenance in terms of um, it's zero water change um, a lot of things are automated so actually it, it arguably would be um, a less hassle than maybe a high 